Welcome to the new era of Oberlin basketball. We hope you enjoy hearing from players, coaches, and our athletic director, Natalie Winklefoos, about what we're building here at Oberlin. Enjoy. Um, this is a destination for top flight scholar athletes and who are gonna have an incredible experience um, because we have an incredible coaching staff. But that that was a change too. You know, we had to you have to you have to find the right people to lead who wanna who doesn't just believe in the X's and O's, but you know, who's going to take the time to really educate um, and and help the help the young women, help the help the students develop um, as people and performers. And that's really where it's gone. It's it's been a lot of it's been a, a long, hard transition for the program, but goodness, we're, we're starting to arrive. I mean, we, we have that NCAC conference tournament championship and, you know, that was a, that was a huge turning moment when, when those, when those teammates were able to cut down nets, like there's no better feeling than having a pair of scissors in your hands. You know, we want to be in that top echelon of our conference. I mean, every single year, you know, so that top two or three where we're competing for the NCAC tournament championship, you know, would love to get to the point where we're nationally competitive, but um, again, what we want from Oberlin basketball, as much as the wins and losses is what we're, you know, we do want to win. We want to get to that point where, you know, every day we're trying to put the best product on the floor, but we want connections. We want a family atmosphere. We want that support system. We want to be able to, to grow with those people around us and, you know, learn from adversity and kind of take all that athletics has to offer in and become better people because of it. So, um, you know, I, I hope that's just kind of a reputation we have. I hope we have people in our conference that respect our program, that if they don't win it, that they kind of cheer for us. And they say, well, gosh, if anybody, if we're not going to win it, I hope Oberlin does because they're just a, a really classy group that, that does things the right way. They win the right way. They play so hard. Like I don't ever want to meet them in the tournament because of how hard they play and they just leave it all out there. So, you know, there's so many different aspects that, you know, we want to see on a daily basis in practice that I think um, will hopefully come to define our program in future years. The future for Oberlin is really bright under Coach Dunmire. Um, just her enthusiasm, her experience, her willingness, her eagerness, um, just to be successful and to lead her student athletes to success is something that's so powerful. And the program would definitely be on the up and up very soon. why her i mean from the moment you talk to her there's there's incredible energy there's there's an authenticity that you know is really meaningful for me um i want people to to mean what they say um and they're going to follow through with what they say they're going to do so um you know follow through and follow up like that's that's what's important to me um and i know she's wildly competitive right like she's a winner and I will surround myself with winners. You know, this, this was the person that could help our program take the next step. And then thinking about what an incredible mentor she could be to our student athletes. Get out of here. Coach Dunmire's like the perfect blend of like energetic and chill. Yeah, I think she is like super passionate and cares about us all like so much and um, it translates to her coaching. And I think that, um, yeah, she gets on us sometimes, but it's because she cares about us. And it's awesome when she does because she never like holds a grudge. She just tells us what to do and then we move on and fix it and gets the next play. And I think she's always super supportive and encouraging and is going to help us get to the next level. Um, Coach Dunmire off the court. Um, she's funny. She's outgoing. Um, definitely has like a lot of good quotes, a lot of good Fletcher stories. Um, and yeah, she just makes it really easy to like come to her about anything and it's just always there for us when we need her. So. Dunmire's coaching style on the court is very like energetic, hyped up, like she might jump up or just start stomping on the ground <laughs> depending how the game is going. But you can tell that she cares a lot about the game and like, cares a lot about us and puts a lot of work in to us um, for us to be able to succeed. And you can really tell by that. So it's a definitely a great experience to be able to play for someone like her. I think off the court, she's still energized like she is on the court. Um, but you can just go in the office, sit on the couch, talk to her anytime during the day, whatever you want to talk about. It's very like, she's very welcoming and warm. Like you get that good feeling like you could just 
spill out all your problems there, like good or bad, you know? And it's a really great thing to do. I mean, I think we want Oberlin basketball to be something that when any recruit steps on campus and spends any time with us as a coaching staff or our team, they just right away understand and feel what a special group it is and how connected our group is. Um, we want it to be a family atmosphere. We want it to be filled with uh, individuals that are focused on being a great teammate and that are gonna push each other out of their comfort zone, yet also support each other and be each other's biggest fans. Um, you know, I think from like an on-court vision, I mean, we want to get to the point where we're fighting for a conference championship every single year and that we're putting, you know, a great product out there in terms of that. But again, um, kind of always coming back to our core values, which we have identified as connection. And we talk a lot about, you know, that team chemistry aspect of it, like forming those relationships, getting to know people um, on a deeper level, finding out what your teammates' wise are, and then communicating above all else, like, you know, a great team is not without conflict, but it's, it's how you deal with conflict. conflict. Um, integrity, we want great people in our program, people that are willing to fight for what's right. So, I mean, first and foremost, we just we want really good people and people of high character. Um, and I think that that's important in anything that you do to surround yourself with tremendous people. Um, another one of our core values is respect. Again, just kind of treating each other with respect, uh, valuing diversity and, and learning from each other and being willing to, to do that on a daily basis in and out of, you know, our team. Uh, and then our last core value is toughness. And again, you know, we are going to push people out of their comfort zone. We want people in our program that, that want to be challenged, that want to be pushed, that want to and are willing to be uncomfortable to grow. Um, at the same time, again, we're going to be their biggest fans from a coaching standpoint you know, coaching aspect, we're going to be there for them, you know, beyond this time. And we talk a lot about trusting that process and enjoying the journey. And so, you know, it's going to be a meaningful experience. We feel like if people take it in and are willing to go with the ups and downs and look back and, you know, they're going to leave Oberlin with friendships and relationships that last a lifetime, hopefully, and then a support system, both from coaches and teammates that hopefully, again, last forever and are things that they can always hold on to. The type of student athlete we're looking for, again, first and foremost, we want great, great teammates in our program. So people are willing to get out of themselves and become part of something bigger than themselves. Um, you know, obviously we want people driven from an individual standpoint that are going to work their butt off to get better and, and that want to play and want to take somebody else's spot and challenge each other and push their teammates to get better. But again, at the same time, that are going to be their teammates' biggest fans. We want highly motivated, driven students in the classroom, um, on the court, and you know, people that really, really understand and value the overall Oberlin experience. Um, so yeah, we want basketball to be a high priority. We want it to be you know, academics. We want it to be basketball as a close second in many ways, but we want them to run with it and to understand that their experience at Oberlin is so much more than their classes in basketball and that they have the opportunity to dive into their other passions, to make a difference, to be at the forefront of, of great social change and just to do so many positive things that are beyond their sport and to really take advantage of every aspect of our campus and the Oberlin experience. When we describe an Oberlin basketball player, I think we wanna describe someone who's intense, um, who has a lot of grit competitiveness, um, but also, wants to be bonded with their teammates at a deep level, cares about them um, at such a deep level, wants a strong relationship with their coaches, wants that phenomenal education, wants to be challenged on the court, in the classroom, and wants to grow, wants to grow as a teammate, a leader, a person throughout their four years and um, leave the program better than, than where they, they started and really leave a lasting legacy in the, in the lives of their teammates, in the lives of their coaches and um, in the community here at Oberlin. I love the quote, like fate loves the fearless. Like I think that that's important to try to like create an environment where people, you know, aren't fearful of making a mistake. And, you know, because so much goes into like winning a championship that has nothing to do with really even like talent or skill on the court. Like some of it is just kind of things falling into place and a lot of different things with that. You know, for us, success isn't just winning championships. I mean, we want that. We are hungry. Coach Dummer and I are so similar in that way where we are competitors. We hate losing more than just about anything in this entire world. I hate it. I can't stand it. Um, 
in, in both of us, you know, when we lose, it's just about analyzing and figuring out how we can get better, get in the film room and figure it out, you know, get in the, get in the gym with our players, you know, but success is so much, I think, for us beyond that. I think we want their four years to truly be life-changing and to really be able to graduate with that Oberlin degree and, and go and be phenomenal leaders in this world um, and to have relationships with us and our teammates that last so much beyond these, these four years and to really, um, you know, find their passion while they're here, find their why in terms of, of what they do, what they do and um, to really be mentors for them and to be their biggest fans in life. And so for us, success is giving, giving our kids four phenomenal years, um, both on and off the court that they will remember for the rest of their lives and, and really, you know, be an OB forever. My name is Gina Lombard. I am from Newton, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm going to be a freshman and I'm planning on majoring in neuroscience. I'm Maggie Balderson. Um, I'm going to be a first year and potential major is going to probably be law and society and gender and feminist studies somewhere along there with hopefully a minor in Spanish. I chose Oberlin for like, I think three different reasons. One being the fact that I just stepped on campus and felt like this was home. Um, it just like I hadn't had that feeling anywhere else, so I knew that this was a special place. Um, two being you guys, the coaching staff, um, there was no better pairing that I found, and I think like assistant coach is just as important as the head coach, and like I just wanted to find a program where I thought that the coaches like could cater best to my skill set and like help me develop as a player. And then lastly, like the academics are just top tier and that kind of tied it all together for me because I had always wanted high academic and high athletic as well. Initially, um, I definitely didn't want to be too far away from home. Um, I thought like, uh, like maybe like a five hour radius would be good. But, um, you know, I was like set in stone on picking two schools that were kind of like close to home and I was picking between those two. And then I took my official visit at Oberlin and it just like completely, I was like, this is the place I need to be. Like, I was comparing everything else to Oberlin once I was there. And, like, the team really was one of the main reasons that I chose to go here. And specifically, like, you guys, the coaching staff, like, I don't know. I just felt so welcomed. And I felt like this is the place I need to be. These are the people I need to be around. So I was like, I, it wasn't even, like, a second thought. I was like, I'm, this is where I need to be. we just like found so many similarities like she's such a good like genuine kind-hearted person so it like wasn't like I had to kind of sort through to see what she was really about like all her cards were on the table she was honest I appreciated that I was honest so there was just like a foundation for the relationship to start there my first like unofficial visit at Oberlin she just like is such a down-to-earth person and she's very honest she's very open about her life and like that was really I guess, refreshing for me to just, like, be able to have, like, a nice, easy conversation with her. My mom absolutely loved her the first time that she met her, and she was like, she is my favorite coach that we have met out of any of them, and I was like, I agree. I was 13 years old. My sister got me a pot-bellied pig for my birthday. Um, pot-bellied pigs were supposed to be smarter than cats and dogs, which could have been the case. She was very, very stubborn um, and did some things that really made you think she was really smart. For example, my mom locked her out of the kitchen because we had a baby gate to keep the pig out of the kitchen when we had people over or we were eating so she wasn't like oinking at them during dinner. She went into my parents' bedroom, jumped on the bed and took a big poo on my mom's pillow. So like classic, like Agnes, you are the smartest animal ever, right? But um, just not quite as cuddly, like definitely like dogs and cats better. But yeah, Agnes Elizabeth lived to be 13 years old, definitely um was talk of the town for a long time lived in the house went to the bathroom in a litter box like we did not live on a farm i repeat we did not live on a farm this pig lived in the house so yeah good stuff